Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Um, we're gonna, it's gonna be a treat tonight. Um, we have some ingredients that are going to be a little unusual, however usual. Uh, <clears throat> the flavors are not, I don't, you don't usually see them paired together in the culinary world. Um, but um, this is the, um, this is the result of a kind of an Iron Chef experiment we did here at the house um, this summer. We received, I don't know, I think probably 20 gallons of grapefruit. And um, we made everything that we could think of in grapefruit. I mean, we made, uh, I made a grapefruit uh, chicken wings. You guys might, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll remember this. I did a grapefruit, we did grapefruit, um, you know, soups and desserts and all kinds of stuff. And um, my favorite from the whole thing, which I'm not doing tonight, I'm sorry, but my favorite from the whole thing was the um, grapefruit hollandaise. I was like, why don't we just, you know, substitute the lemon for the grapefruit? And you wouldn't have thought that it would made such a big, you know, difference. But let me tell you that the grapefruit that you substituted in the hollandaise sauce for the lemon made such a world of difference. It was beautiful when it cooked with the egg. It was so refreshing, beautiful development. Anyway, so it inspired me with grapefruit. And um, tonight's Iron Chef challenge is grapefruit butternut squash. So we're gonna do that, okay? You gotta stay tuned in. It's not gonna be too tough of a show. I mean, come on, I'm gonna do like, you know, I'm gonna peel a little of this, chop a little of that. Do some, I'm gonna do some uh, chicken with it. Uh, it's gonna be, you know, relatively just country style, you know, um, uh, farm style kind of chicken. We're gonna do a thyme chicken on that. So it'll be, here's the unique part. Here's the unique part. The grapefruit and the sage. The flavor that happens with this is mm, culinary astronomical. Culinary uh, gastronom gastronomical. Something like that. I don't know how to say that, you know, but that's what they should be saying or something like that. So <laughs> Sage, if you can I don't know if you can find some sage or some grapefruit, go out and just smell them both. That's what I do a lot of times with my ingredients. I'll like, um, you know, I'll try, is it gonna go with garlic? No, is it gonna go with this? I'll check them. I'm just smelling, I'm smelling, I'm smelling all this stuff. And the next thing you know, bang. And actually uh, the grapefruit uh, sage came from my uh, uh, good friend, executive chef Christian Anderson. And he actually did the grapefruit um, sage. On the, uh, I think it was a sorbet, um, it was a special. I think he was at Cyrus, actually, when he was working at Cyrus, the uh, Michelin restaurant. Anyway, um, we're going to check out that, and next thing you know, you're going to see me doing some prep, getting ready for... Oh, and also, I don't even know how I'm going to prepare this yet, except that I'm, I'm going to bake it. I just don't know how I'm going to cut it yet, so pay, come back, and we're going to show you how to cut this up, and the way we're going to do it tonight, at least. Bang! So here we go. We got to get started sometime. Um, somebody, somebody tell me why I can't get these stickers off when I have the gloves on. Um, anyway, so, oh boy, I didn't, my, I didn't put my trash out. Did you guys notice that? Trash sitting there? Okay, so, <laughs> all right. Um, we're going to want to make sure that we peel these butternut squash. Um, not too difficult, you know. I just go crazy with it, you know. Um, if you don't peel these suckers, they're gonna, um, this skin is like soapy. It'll turn your soup and your food into soap. It's terrible, terrible, terrible flavor too. Oh, can you tell I've done it? It was bad. It was really bad, man. Anyway, so um, uh, we're gonna just get rid of this, uh, the soap skin. And then we'll start chopping. So here we are, I've done some peeling. Just want to speed up that process because you know, it can bore you guys. All right, so um, like I said, I don't know how I'm gonna do this yet. Um, there will be some prep on the inside of this. I'm gonna get rid of the ends. 
And, well, let's go down. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Gotta be really careful with this big sucker. Okay, we got some um, seeds in here. I'm gonna grab our pour, uh, pumpkin knife. Not a lot of seeds. If you're making a lot, I'm, I, you can save them. You know, I'm gonna throw this in the backyard and they'll be planted for next year. Nice clean, um, nice clean break from the seed there with this nice pumpkin. Uh, I always use this pumpkin, this spoon for pumpkins. I don't know why. It's got a little kind of a flat to it. Um, anyway, we threw some pumpkin seeds in our backyard last year and there's a huge pumpkin patch. Charlie Brown. Um, and we got pumpkins in the back here. These did not, this did not come from that, of course. All right, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna chop it up a certain way. We'll figure out which way we're gonna chop it here in just a minute. I think I got an idea already. Come back. So, here we go. Take the smaller one first. I'm gonna go long. And when we roast them, they'll be long pieces like that. And that could be beautiful. You know, you're trying to look for a finished product, a vision of it before, of course, you start, start everything going, but I'm not like that. I try to figure it out as I go. <laughs> anyway, look at these beautiful things, hey? Who's the artist now? Uh-huh, yeah. Look at that. Swove it. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do a bunch of these. Look at this. See the tall one right here? I'm going to have trouble getting through that. So, I'm going to go right from the top. Then I'll put things in perspective. Oh, look. I can even do a bake like that sometime. Look at that, huh? Maybe we should do... I wonder if I could do that again. I wonder if I should just go with these pieces like this. You see how I figure things out as I go? You gotta experiment, man. Look at that, isn't that kinda cool? Does it stand on its own? No. But if I worked on it, it probably could. Anyway, I'm gonna chop some more stuff here, and we're gonna make the master creation. So here's the next part. Um, as we have the pieces to the desired cut, um, remember, I left them like this. I'm gonna be doing something fun with these. I left them in uh, as close to their natural state as possible uh, and uh, still be cooked. So uh, I'm figuring out what's going to taste good with this. We're making this up. Come on, let's make it up together. So I got the piece of sage. Got that robust uh, herbage. It's, oh, it's beautiful. It's very herbage. -y. It doesn't, it's not as floral as some herbs. So I test it with my garlic, infused garlic. That smells good. What about the rosemary? That's more floral. They go together, but I wanna go like a solitude sage with this because if this is big with the sage, the grapefruit's really gonna bounce off, or not bounce off it, but actually kind of marry and create an incredible dynamic flavor together that you wouldn't believe unless you do it. So sage, grapefruit, butternut squash. That's where I'm gonna go with this. Uh, of course, you use a little salt, a little bit of garlic, uh, olive oil. It's gonna be really simple. Okay, so this is a treatment for the sage. I've picked some good leaves. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this garlic olive oil and just pour it right on the sage. I wanna make sure that the sage is covered because these are gonna turn into like little sage chips you know like little um crispies sage crispies okay um just want that to make sure it's done we're gonna make sure that it actually gets on the right all over this uh butternut squash also just making sure i salted the butternut squash a little bit look at that beauty he's trying to get away and <laughs> let's get a sheet where my sheets at? Let's get a larger. Get a sheet. 
Um, you know what? I'm going to do some parchment on this and I'll show you it built in just a second. Okay, here's the prep on the sage to butternut squash and I'm going to slice some grapefruit now uh, because we have to infuse the sage with the grapefruit. That was the whole idea in the first place. So what I did was got some grapefruit and I made some garnishes out. Let me do some garnish with you real quick. How about that? So um, we got the sage on the uh, squash, butternut squash. Now we're gonna make some. We're gonna add some uh, grapefruit to it. So you see here that I'm making some cuts to this grapefruit. I'm trying to get five sides. One, two, three, four. Here's five. Go straight aside. Okay. Now we got all these beautiful pieces of grapefruit here. Beautiful. And then we're gonna take the tops off because we're gonna get down to the core of this grapefruit. We're gonna use all this for you know garnish. I'm gonna put juice on here. We're gonna throw. You know what? Let's throw some grapefruit in there. You know why? Because it'll turn into something beautiful probably. And um, something beautiful. Something good. All my confusion, he understood. Remember that one? All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful out of my life. Yeah, he did, man. He did. He did. Something beautiful. Oh, am I supposed to be cooking? I'm supposed to be cooking now, okay. Something right, anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna leave some um, some grapefruit in here. You know why? Because it might turn into something beautiful. Wait, I don't wanna use too much liquid. So we wanna bake these things and want them to have a crisp edge on them. In fact, I might bake them for a while and then if they get too soft, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on the broiler and flash these suckers, okay? All right. So these are the garnishes. Let me come over there and show you one of the garnishes. Get rid of the seeds. Remember the seeds are no good. This is one of the, here. I'm coming over to you. You know what I do? I come over to you guys. So here's the garnish. It's like this, um, what do they call those? Pinta, is it a five? Or, yeah, I don't know. So that's a, uh, it's a garnish right there. It's got like five sides on it, isn't that nice, huh? And so that'll be later when we garnish the chicken and the butternut squash together. I'm gonna flash that and we'll come back and we'll prep some chicken. Okay, I'm gonna grab the chicken. We have six pieces of uh, breast, oh, excuse me, not breast, thighs. Um, oh man, yeah, I love thighs. Um, so, you know, we're gonna continue with a little bit of garlic on this. Just like we did before on the other dish, because you do want to have something tied together. Um, and uh, rosemary, this is going to be kind of a country style, you know, not too much rosemary. Let's go thyme. I remember, I mentioned thyme in the beginning. What we want to do is get some of these fresh sprigs here. We're just going to sprinkle around. I like to put the herbs on before I put any oils. The reason is I think that the herbs should touch the main material. If it's a protein, if it's a vegetation, whatever it is, I think the herb should touch it. So if you have a coating of oil on your um, your, your material, your product you're cooking or your, your, your main dish, it's gonna it's not gonna actually touch that that uh, piece. So I think the herbs should touch the the meat or vegetables, whatever it is. I always hold off on the oil for a minute, so. okay? So that's one side. Let's do uh, both sides. Bang, 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 bang. So we got six, six thighs. We're gonna peel, pick some more thyme. Just, we're just gonna sprinkle. Thyme's a pretty fragrant, uh, flavorful for how little it is. Look at these little things. These little teeny leaves provide a lot of flavor. Um, again, this is another herb that's not 
not real floral and, and more um, kind of, you might say like have a medicinal um, smell to it. Uh, like like rosemary is a little more floral, like I kind of mentioned earlier. So anyway, we're going to do this. So whenever you have that, you have something that's kind of uh, medicine-y, you want to bring in something else to, to tone it down a little bit. So then, plus this is pretty big. So you don't want just, you know, overtly herbaceous, you know, uh, flavor, unless it can somehow be brought down. You can use, uh, let me change my glove real quick because I had uh, touched some chicken, right? And I'll probably go through both these sets because I'll touch, touch the chicken again when we roll through the herbs on it. I think it was just one glove, but you know what? You never know. Because I don't like, you know, doing this and then touching everything else and da 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 Besides, we're in the uh, age of uh, pandemics and stuff, you know, we're really uh, conscious of this stuff. So I hope you guys are still tuning in here. You still tuning in? Watch this. I'm going to make this beautiful. So I got the salt. Bam. Now we have seasonings still touching the chicken before the oil. And because we did the thyme, and I said it wasn't very floral, we want to do just a little hint of rosemary. We don't have to go too far with that. Make it too small. Ooh, so when we put the oil in it, it's going to go all over the place. So it'll be good. Okay. Let's do the oil. Olio, olio. And it's got a um, infusion of garlic in there. I used most of it earlier, but I still bring it up by just adding a little oil. And whammo. I don't want to go too far with this oil either. Just want to, because I'm going to be putting the cover on it. See that cover here? We'll be doing the cover on it. Oops. Okay, right there. There we go. Now let's get it on. So we get the oil on with this. Remember, we're just kind of doing thyme and hints, hints of other seasoning. You know, I haven't been doing a lot of peppers in my dishes, and um, I think it's on purpose. I think my body's telling me to chill out on, you know, like the, the hard you know, hot, spicy stuff, except for, I, I don't know, I can't stay away from Indian food, you know, and like, and stuff like that, and I can't stay away from Mexican food either, but for some of the black pepper, I haven't been, um, I've been going for these just, just specific flavors of these herbs, I think that's where my head is right now, that's where I am in the development, pepper's great, it brings out some nice flavors, everybody's used to it, and you don't want to, you know, sell something to people they don't like, you know, they don't, they're not used to. People don't eat things they're not used to eating. But, if you can make it like this, this is common enough, not too much uh, pepper, but I'm going to do a little dash on there, just because I was speaking so badly about it, you know what I mean, I'm a nice guy. Right? So I'm going to do just a little bit of pepper. And this will go, pop this in the oven, we're going to... Probably slow bake this chicken. Let me give you a quick photo of that. We're probably gonna slow bake that. Mm. Three. No, I needed to cook, so it's it's a brown, it's a dark meat. So I'm gonna go 375 for you know 45, 50 minutes checking on temperature. See how it goes. Okay, I think we're ready. Look at this. All this and that together. You I'm gonna make a platter? I'm gonna make a platter. See you in a little bit. Okay, here we go. We have a bake. We have baked. Um, the uh, I separate. I took these off the sheet um, just because you know I don't have space, so I took them off the sheet uh, to do that. Now here's the chicken, freshly out. Um, I have garnishes also for this, and uh, what I'm going to start with first is our spinach bed. Okay. I'm going to try to point the leaves out to the edges of the plate because the show is out here. You know what I mean? And the stems are always in the center. Anyway, where you root from. All right, so there we go. We got some. Ooh, I like to flip them up so that the dark green side is up. It looks uniform that way. Um, not everybody goes through small details like this, but I'm a color guy. Remember, you look for color, color differences, texture differences, heat and cold differences. All right, I'm gonna do the squash next. 
Let's see, what do you guys think? Kind of difficult. What do you do when you're dealing with long pieces like this? Huh? Oh, she's that small piece to the top. You gotta have a vision. You gotta have vision. You know? Here are the these things together for the first time. I've never done it like this. Look at that. So I got what I did was I just uh, I put all like the crooks, the crook necks, whatever they are, in the center. So they're kind of facing those ways. So you can see them still, which is cool. I like that. But what about the chicken? This is a big, big piece of chicken. What are we gonna do with that now? So, what on the outside? I guess so. Ooh, that's hot. Glad I got my belt on. Um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do chickens. Um, I did flash them with the broiler a little bit. Is that enough for one person? Not for me. Look at this. I'm doing two. Thrace. For me. So it has the, um, it has all the elements there now. What do we need to do? We need to garnish. So, right now I'm not happy with the presentation, so I think I'm going to change one of these so that they end up like that. No, I'm like it. How about change the chicken so it's on top of bits? How about it just kind of, because everything kind of goes together. Like a little bit on top, a little bit on the low. Alright? So the chicken is kind of up, kind of down. Yeah. I think I'm going somewhere now. I'm going to do a little of the grapefruit right in the center. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just, uh, you know, each plate is going to be its own thing. I got some um, broiled uh, grapefruit. I think I'm gonna, I want to do something with that. I'm going to put them on the outsides. Watch this, outsides. Because they bring, they, there's just like this um, a smoky flavor that came from the grapefruit now. From these pieces also. Which is cool. I like the essence of flavors on my plate. Um, and if you got a nose, you can smell this stuff. You can get these essences of, of, of things. Remember the sage? The sage crispies? I made some of those. We're going to go for it right here on top. Yeah, I like those. I think we should do some more fresh grapefruit, maybe anywhere here. How about down here? Lay it in there, bang. Do we need another piece of, 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 of let's do another piece of the butternut squash because we've got to show off a little bit of that. This doesn't have enough, oh, look at that, you can do a, one of these right over it and right on top of it at the same time okay that works for me let me pull you in closer be right there